Peace family, it's your boy Fanzi Neutron representing for the Battle That Experience. We appreciate everybody tapping in once again. This week we're putting the artist spotlight on somebody from the UK. Definitely excited about this one. You know, a lot of uh, our recent artist spotlights have been some of the family out there in the States, but it's always good to look back on the home turf while including the UK. So we joined this week with brother Kemet. What's good with you, brother? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's been a minute, man. Like you were saying earlier on. So yeah, man, it's it's nice to be, you know what I mean? Um, you know, on a platform, do you know what I mean, where you know man are representing next man, do you know what I mean, for music. So yeah, man, it's good, man. It's good. No doubt, man. I mean, we appreciate definitely like um all the independent talent and stuff out there as well. You know, there's always a lot going on with the industry and the majors, but sometimes some of the best stuff is heard on the underground. So I guess, you know, focusing on yourself as it's your art spotlight, you know, can you tell the people where it is that you hail from? Oh, uh, sorry, where I? Where you hail from, where you from, where you represent, where oh, you Oh, where I'm from. Where you yeah, man, I'm from, from you, UK, Leeds, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, representing Leeds, Leeds, you know, Leeds, Leeds is a, a massive city. You know what I mean? We've got so much talent here. It's like, it's super crazy. Um, you know, especially the underground scene. So, yeah, man, Leeds, man. It's got to be it's got to be put on the map, man, for real. Yeah, you know, I know quite a few heads up the Leeds way in terms of, like, hip-hop. Like, um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Jetsons. You know, shouts out to Jetson. Um, DJ Agent M also, you know, representing up Leeds. Quite definitely some talent putting it down for the hip hop scene up there. But from what I recall, you know, Leeds has definitely got like a party vibe. I remember like the baseline mm. being quite big up there and, you know, garage grime and, you know, yeah, yeah. like the hip hop to, to an element yeah. as well. But I only mention that because, you know, your kind of vibe is a bit different. It's not necessarily yeah. like if it would be, I don't want to say indicative of Leeds, what people might associate with what they might hear from Leeds. So you want to talk to us a bit about that? Like, how did your artist name come about and, you know, your style of music that you started developing? So, so first of all, my artist name came from a friend of mine. He used to be in a group called I Tell Spirits. Um, and they were just like, they, they, there was a group that was jamming. It was more sort of like reggae and, and so forth. And um, the 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 guy who 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 put who put us together as a rap group, yeah, he gave me the name Kemet because he was from Africa. Do you know what I mean? So, so that's when I started to 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 know a little bit more about my black roots and so forth. So so he gave me he gave me the name Kemet, and I was like, like, what does that mean? You know what I mean, Kemet. So he says, oh, land of the dark. Land of the Dark. All right. So I started researching the name and that. And I said, you know what? I like that. I, I really do. I like the name. Do you know what I mean? I said, the, the Land of the Dark. So it, fe it felt like the name felt like my ancestors were there. Do you know what I mean? Helping me move forward. You see what I'm saying? It gave me the strength to move forward. So I like that name. So that's where the name come from, um, came in. Um, the music, yeah. The way that the music started to develop. So I, I figured out early that I was more of a storyteller. So you get the you get the types of people who write music, who write um they write a lot of like similes or they write a lot of entendres, you know, and they do like a lot of wordplay and music. With me, yeah, I was more sort of like poetic. So I, you know, obviously I grew up where my mum, my father. You know what I mean? They they used to play a lot of like mortal music. They used to play like a lot of reggae. Do you know what I mean? Dance hall and um, uh, lovers rock in the house. Do you know what I mean? So so I always grew up listening to stories. So that's how my music sort of developed into a into sort of like a story mode. Do you know what I mean? So like you know I'm I'm, I'm clever at you know building scenarios in a person's mind. Like you could close your eyes and you could see everything that I'm talking about. You know. So that's where my music kind of developed. Um, and it was kind of different towards what they were doing in Leeds, you see. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people, they were battling each other. So while they were battling with each other, yeah, 
I was just writing scenarios on pages. So I actually went to college. Um, I, I went to college like in 19, from 19, uh, 1998. And I did, um, I studied, um, uh, what do you call it now? Um, I studied poetry. So creative writing, we were doing creative writing classes where we were doing um, uh, Japanese haiku. So we learned to do Japanese haiku. We learned to do uh, short stories. Um, and we learned to do other things, you know, with creative writing. And I think the short stories are kind of sort of like, you know, that that's where I moved to the short stories. So, you know, my tu tutor asked me, you know, she says, you good at writing. How about turning one of those short stories, yeah, into a rap? You know what I mean? So that's where it kind of yep. came from and it, it started to develop out there. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, do you know what I mean? College, you know, college was a, was a good influence on me in a way. And not only that, it separated me from everybody else. You know what I mean? So while, you know, you know, you had the underground scene that was going on, but I was more in the sort of like college scene. You know what I mean? So it, it, it was, it was hard to find other rappers that kind of relate to me. And that's how my music turned out. You know what I mean? It just turned out, you know, sort of different to, to what the majority of leads is. But it's funny because, you know, the, some, some of the Leeds rappers, they were turning around and saying, what you do is hard for us to do. Like, we, there's no way we could do that. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, that put a little smirk on my face, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, as, as you do. But it's nice to be unique. You don't want to sound like everybody else. You know what I mean? That's that, that. I think that was the whole sort of, like, premise for, you know, for hip-hop as well. You know, sounding unique, being yourself. You know what I mean? Not you know not copying everyone else. So I can guarantee you when you when you hear a Kemet track, yeah, it's like, is is this guy really from Leeds? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you're gonna question yourself, you know what I mean? But that's the whole point. You know what I mean? You don't want to sound the same as every other rapper, you know? So no, yeah, man. man. That, no, that's definitely important. And I mean, you know, even just touching on that, when you do different things, you know, you're gonna get different results. And as you said, just kind of mm. form a different sound and identity there in that. And, you know, I think, um, you know, when you said a lot of people, they probably struggled with, like, how do you do that? Because, you know, for us having the experience of, you know, the UK side of things also, you know, we've saw the UK music sort of develop. And, you know, I always tell people at one point there was only a few kind of heads. Maybe it was the same in different cities. I could speak for, like, Birmingham, London, other places. But... You know, mm. not everybody was rapping. So when you had people that were doing like, you know, jungle or drum and bass or Gary's mm. or, and stuff like that, mm. um, at one point the hip hop that was being produced was a lot more authentic to the tone of just hip hop that we know. And um, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Uh, definitely a lot more complex to what um, Grime Myers was doing. Even in Birmingham, I remember some friends of mine, Burns is Grime, they had a studio and, you know, some Grime artists and stuff used to come and, this was at the era when everybody shot like freestyles and, you know, to put yeah. them up on YouTube and they'll come in and they'll, they'll, they'll do a grind one and they'll be well rehearsed and practiced and then they'll try and rap and do some hip hop stuff and most of them they'll probably mess it up and then they'll say, oh, you know what, let me go back to do a grind one because it's easier. And at that point, I didn't actually consider that most of them was like hip hop fans, but they wasn't able to produce hip hop to a certain level so they was doing like um, some of these other forms of music now we've got like I guess an amalgamation with like you know the trap and the drill everything's kind of similar now I guess across the border spectrum but I guess even taking that do you feel that um, the I don't want to say the attention to detail but the emphasis that used to be on lyricism within hip hop is sort of diminished nowadays because when we look at like the UK scene and you know certain to a degree people even in the US that kind of lyricism doesn't seem to be upheld as much in the industry. And as you said, even just people sounding different and unique. We hear a lot of this stuff with these young guys and they all sound the same and there's not much you know, different. You know, I, it's, it's funny how you talk about that because, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about for a very long time. You know what I mean? Um, about the genre of hip hop. What we... I remember my head here, right, is literally still stuck in the 90s and the 2000s, you know what I mean? Because for me, that's where the strongest music was. That was the music here, right, that was, it was so strong here, right, that it's like, can, can it, can it, ele can it be elevated any more than this? You know what I mean? 
Well, I think it's a generational thing. You know what I mean? Like, I've been looking at it differently now, yeah? So, I had a, you know, if you remember, we had the time of mumble rap. That didn't really reach the UK. The UK was looking at that in the US, yeah, and thinking, nah, man, we, we can't we can't have that. Because I don't, I don't remember hearing any kind of mumble rap, yeah, coming from the UK. You know what I mean? At the time, it was coming from the US, yeah? The UK was like, nah, we, we ain't having none of that. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and rightly so, do you know what I mean? But what I think has happened, yeah, um, or what I believe has happened is that music is oversaturated. Now, we have... There's too many windows into music, like the internet for starters. So we've got to, we've got a lot of access. So we've got so many choices. You see what I'm saying? So you could you can literally choose. But I think what it is is what the mainstream is putting out. It's what the mainstream is focusing on. You know what I mean? It's making some of us like question it. You yeah. know the radio stations. What are the radio stations? Um, you know, um, playing. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we know the best stuff. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, bro. No, 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 it's all right. Go on, go on. Yeah, no, I was just kind of adding on and saying, we know definitely the best stuff is generally coming from, like, the underground. And um, yeah. I think more so my my notion behind, I guess, even thinking to that degree is, um, it's like when we look at the saturation, it becomes more saturated, the easier it is for people to do it. So it's like um, mm. when there was a higher bar and expectancy for, even if it was just complex lyrics or a certain type of mm. delivery, you know, if, if everybody could say hat, cat, rap, bat, mat, cat, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. then it can easily become more saturated because everybody yeah, could yeah. do it. And I think it, it got to a period, especially for the UK, where there was a certain, whether it was a flow pattern or a certain um, style of delivery that became sort of accepted and, you know, validated mm -hmm. across the board, which a lot of people was able to just latch on and replicate so easy. And, you know, you, you see in elements in the States and that also, but um, I think that mm -hmm. kind of helps push um, just this overall mass amount of people just kind of getting into music and doing it now because it wasn't like one stage where, you know, you really had to be saying something to either be rapping or you had to be coming, yeah. you know, you had to really be busting different or something or, you know, something that people could listen to. I mean, and, yeah, I mean, people still break down bars and stuff like that. It's really nice to be able to do that. Do you know what I mean? But how many people, how many, how many rappers out there are storytellers? Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people, yeah, I love stories. You know what I mean? I grew up with stories. You know what I mean? I grew up, you know, reading a lot of books. You know what I mean? So I want to, you know, I want to, I want to hear a story, yeah, right? That, you, you know what I mean? That, that will sort of like encapsulate the mind. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I want to hear, do you know what I mean? Um, how a young man, yeah, right, was off the streets and he made it somehow. Do you know what I mean? He went through some 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 drama or whatever and he made it. Do you know what I mean? I want to hear something like that. Do you know what I mean? The majority of the music that I I'm hearing these days, yeah, it's it, it's like everybody's getting at everybody or something has something to say about somebody else. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? In in that kind of way, yeah, do you know what I mean? Uninspiring. It, yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 noticing that's what's uninspiring for you as well too. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Definitely, man. And um, you know, as you said, there is that sort of um that 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 is missing. And you know, because to be honest, like that was a huge element of hip hop was you know, quote unquote storytelling. You know, the artists were great yeah. storytellers, yeah. um, even you know, from the old school, if people want to call it that, and or the golden yeah, era. Yeah. Yeah, there was always that, that element of storytelling. Yeah, you know, that, when we listen you know I mean? to Wu-Tang, when we listen to, you know, we're, mm. we're, we're visualising what they're saying as we're mm. listening to yeah, the rap, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, cash rules, yeah. whatever it is, you know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you might as well. You dead, listen, thing, Dead Presidents, you know? do you know what I mean? Uh, one of my favourite albums, um, Let's Get Free. Do you know what I mean? One of my favorite albums. It's a beautiful album, is that one? Let's get free. That's yeah. that was that was an inspiring album to me as well too. Do you know what I mean? Um, the 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 roots with Black Thought. Um, uh, what's it called? Is it Illadelph? That the album Illadelph. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Fantastic album. Well, I was actually you know I mean? going to ask you who were some of the inspirations behind your music or behind you as an artist, and it, that isn't just subject to hip hop. That could be, you know, just. Oh, okay. So so. I would say the the several artists. Um, Mikey Spice is one of them. Um, reggae, yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Mikey Spice. You know what I mean? Uh, um, Nat King Cole. My, my dad used to play Nat King Cole a lot. Do you know what I mean? BB uh, King. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of um, um, what's his, what's his name now? I, think, I forget. James Brown. Do you know what I mean? James Brown. You know, music like that. You know, has in, inspired me. Um, and then obviously on the hip hop side of things, um, say UK, um, Akala, Loki. You know what I mean? Um, you know, great hip hop artists. And then on the US side of things, yeah, it's got to be sort of like, you know, Nas Black Thought. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Rick One. Do you know what I mean? Um, or Common. I like Common as well, too. Do you know what I mean? Common's, Common's a great artist. I love his freestyles as well, too. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you know, these, these are the people that influenced me. Bob Marley himself. You know what I mean? The, the late, great Bob Marley. Do you know what I mean? DMX. There's another one, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, some some fantastic music. So, so you know, my inspiration comes from, you know, all different genres, but mainly from, I would say, mainly from the sort of like, you know, the um, the Motown era, do you know what I mean? And okay. the reggae era as well too. You know, my mum used to listen to, like like I said, a lot of dance hall and a lot of... Um, um, Oh, what's it called now? I just said it. Lovers, lovers rock. You know what I mean? Lovers rock. You know where they told stories. You know, you, you know they told, the, and you know anything that's that's got a good story that you can listen to. Anything that makes you feel a certain way. Do you know what I mean? It it, it pulls the emotion out of you. You know what I mean? Those are the type of music. If I'm just sitting there and I'm just rocking to the music, yeah, and the words are just passing me by, and it's not saying, but it's not for me. You know what I mean? But I like a, I like a, I like a good story. I like you know. No, yeah, that's the type of music I like, man. No, you know I mean, that's dope, man. I mean, we're gonna get back to some music stuff, but just focusing a bit more on you as an artist. How do you spend your time outside of the music business? Oh, how do I spend my time outside the music business? You know, um, on a personal level, you know, you know, I've got, you know, I, 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 I work for a living. Do you know what I mean? I've got a family and and so forth. So you know, I spend I spend my time working. I work work long hours, but in between those long hours, I've got the ability to be able to study, sit back, read. Do you know what I mean? So you know, I'm I'm, I'm sort of like reading, doing a few courses and, and, and things like that. Do you know what I mean? Just to to better my skills, better my you know my my future, really and truthfully. Do you know what I mean? So you know, that's what I'm kind of doing outside of that, and then. You know, occasionally I like to I like to play music and I like to write lines and rewrite lines and structuralize. Like my, like my phone is disgusting, man. Seriously, I've got I've got a I've got a notepad, yeah, and anything that I can think of, yeah, I'll put it down. I'll write it down, and I'll be like, all right, how can you move this around here? How can this say that I want to clearly, you know what I mean? So I'm always thinking on those lines of of, of and I, and I've not put anything out yet because I'm still sort of like playing around with some new stuff and I'm I'm actually enjoying it right now I'm just enjoying not having the pressure of oh I've got to get in the studio I've got to do this I've got to do that I've got to put this out now do you know what I mean because I feel like I feel like I have such a love yeah for the music yeah that I feel like if I just rush things yeah and put silly things out yeah it's not going to solidify do you know what I mean? My character. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's not really going to sort of like say who I really am. And it's like that thing. Like you know, if you're on your deathbed, yeah. What would you? What, what would your last words be? Do you know what I mean? Would it be something? You know what I mean? Something that's going to influence a generation, or is it something that's just off the cuff that you're going to say, like you know, in, in an everyday conversation? I'd rather say something in my music, yeah, that's going to influence someone somewhere at some time. You know, so yeah, man. well, hey, you yeah, here, guys. You know, definitely some motivational words from Kemet right there. And you know, sliding back into the music where we're at right now, we know there's a lot of developments. You just mentioned slightly some of it, just how you can distribute music. I mean, everything's very much changed nowadays. It's a lot easier to sort of put your own stuff out in your own leisure. You don't necessarily need to, you know, have the mm. car finds of a label or you know there's a lot more that can be done as an independent artist technology has moved forward so you know you've got that like, ai and all this stuff now you've got um different programs and things you could use to enhance your music um you so can be, I guess, you, ultimately, yeah. 
oh yeah, I was just going to ask ultimately like what's your current thoughts then of just the current climate of the music business today? Um, so, so my, my thoughts on the music business, um, you can be a lot more independent than what you could be now. There's more choices. Uh, you can create your own music. You can, you can, you can purchase leases from the internet. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you wanted to, you know, um, you can take more time putting music out there now as well too. And, and it, and it completely depends if you're in it for the money, yeah, then that's a different route altogether. You know what I mean? If you're in it for the mo money. I think if you're in it for the money, yeah, you've got to be prepared to be able to do all types of things. Like, say, for instance, you've got to be able to write the club bangers. You've got to be able to write. You've got to be able to write on the spot. If you can't write on the spot, you're going to have to have other people writing for you. Do you know what I mean? Um... It's not something that I would endorse. I like to write my own stuff. Do you know what I mean? You know, I, I, I could never spit somebody else's bars. It's not me. It's hard to do. It would be difficult. I've tried it and it just doesn't feel right for me. Um, you know, music, you can get music programs. You can even, you can create a music studio yourself easily. Do you know what I mean? And it depends on how much you want it. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's so many options out there. But independence is definitely the way to go. Do you know what I mean? Because um, if you, uh, I think, if you're one of these people who prefer creativity, independence is the way to go. But if you want to make money, then you're probably better off, you know, you know, signing a deal or something like that. But you've got to be prepared. You know what I mean? You've got to be able to do your, you know, do your freestyles. If you're getting called on the spot, you know, to do interviews or whatever. You've got to be prepared to be able to, you know, be ready, or, you know, at any given time, basically. Do you know what I mean? So you've got all of that to deal with, you know. But definitely, I think these days you've got more chance of being being able to put music out and being heard. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, yeah. A long-winded answer. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I think it's just, you know, it's important. And um, we've got some more questions. We're going to take a short break in a while. But prior to that, we've still got a couple of questions Um. But I think it's important because just as when we talk about the industry, especially from an independent standpoint, that's why I'm glad you did sort of speak on it from, I guess, the financial mm. aspect too, because um, it's quite difficult for young artists nowadays, even though one aspect, they do have the tools to put their own music out. We hear the reports, we see the reports of the, you know, mm. the very low pay grades that they're paying out artists for streams of their music. It's not like, you know, back in the days for some of us where we could, you know, sell CDs ourselves, mm. some people coming out the trunk selling them or, you know, get a thousand CDs just pressed up and you go out there selling them. You know, something is funny. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that as well too because, oh, yeah, that's that's something. I'm glad you mentioned that because I remember I used to going out and, and, and you know, distributing tapes before the CDs was around. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. You do your freestyle tapes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your CDs... But now technology's changed. The people don't very rarely do they use CDs now. It's all digital. It's all downloads and and so forth now, isn't it? Do you know exactly. what I mean? So it's, I think it's harder to distribute music on the street nowadays. I think I think what you do now, yeah, is that when you're distributing, people have smartphones now. So even if you're distributing music on the street, yeah, if you've got a link on you, yeah, you could just turn around and say, listen, you know what, yeah, if you want to check my album out, yeah, just check out this link. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I think technology is changing. I think it's hard to, it depends on who you are. Do you know what I mean? You've got to sort of switch with the times, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, so. definitely. I mean, you know, it, it has its advantages, its disadvantages, you know, mm. like everything. But it definitely has had a huge impact, as you said, just on even getting music to out there to people in the streets. But I guess not only has that changed, but the way that the general public consume music, you know, um, Back in the days, for the most part, we only had whether it was cassettes or CDs, or because that was the medium we needed to play. Whether it was our favorite album or single, whenever we wanted to, again, you know, we've got it. But now, with the internet, you got it at the finger. You, you've got the same possibility to play something whenever you want, but you don't actually need a physical medium to do it you can play a song just you know right off the bat and now it's a lot more broader and it's um a lot more options so it's like 
in one aspect he has kind of hurt the industry and kind of hurt the underground in one degree but um there, there again you could kind of argue that it's helped in other ways and stuff as well but it's an ongoing and i guess evolving thing especially where we're looking at how things are developing now with ai and things like that you know what i mean but we're going to take a short break because we're just winding down a bit on some time so what i'm going to do is we're going to pick back up on the other side with some other questions guys if you're joining us on youtube let us know any thoughts in the comments definitely check out commit on his socials and uh we'll be back on the other side Welcome back, guys. So we're back chopping it up, man, speaking on some hip-hop with Kemet. And it's always great when you have an artist that's um, astute when it comes to just the golden era of music and the aspect of life. Because I feel as though, like, you know, hip-hop's grown so vastly nowadays, a lot of people attach and associate themselves with it. And, you know, rightly so, but... A lot of them aren't really familiar with some of the fundamental like roots and some of the early participants and just different aspects of the culture and just getting into even just artistry, like the poet poetic side of things and you know, just breaking down um music and storytelling <clears throat> from that point. Um, who would you rank as some of your top storytellers within hip hop? Oh, that's easy. Um, top star. I mean, like my top storyteller within hip hop has got to be Nas, um, without question. Um, Black Thor. He's a good storyteller, but he 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 he, he play he plays more around with words. You know, what I mean, like you really got to listen to his stuff. But with Nas, you can pitch it. But it depends on the track store, really, truthfully. Ray Kwan is really good at that. Do you know what I mean? I think Ray, I think Ray Kwan is really good at that. And it depends for Nas, yeah, it depends. But Ray Kwan, yeah, I think, he, as a matter of fact, I would put I would put Ray Kwan, yeah, right, as top, for storyteller. Because he's just got that ability. Whenever he talks, you can see, you can picture it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know any other artists around that and with Nas it depends on the topic you know what I mean Matt? but he's got some some fantastic tracks where you could picture it like that one with the gun do you know what I mean when he's talking about the gun uh, or the one with the power. prison cell yeah. do you know what I mean yeah 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 you gave me power man like those are the tracks that have influenced me Um, and um, what's that what's that other one now there's uh there's the there's the fetus track on the lost tapes the the first lost tapes, um I don't know if you heard that one yet the, the fetus track on that that's crazy that, um, um undying love do you know what I mean rewind do you know what I mean like like it's such great tracks, um so so for me again I mean it's the three that I pointed out earlier on you know for me, um there's probably other you know other artists out there but. The storytellers, uh, oh, um, Stickman from um, Dead Press, you know what I mean? Um, Stickman from Dead Press, um, when he did um, some of those tracks from Let's Get Free, um, where they talk about the incident with the the pigs on the farm, I believe. It's been such a long time since since, since I heard that album, do you know what I mean? But yeah, man, he, he's he's got that ability as well too. So yeah, you know, these, these are my top stories. Oh, DMX, man. 
What do you mean, man? Come on, man. I forgot about DMX, man. He's a great storyteller. Do you know what I mean? The Damien tracks. You know what I mean? Where he's talking to the devil or he's talking to a demon or whatever. Yeah, man. Yeah, DMX, man. Rest in peace to X. Yeah, for real. Do you know what I mean? Rest in peace, man, for sure, man. Such a great artist, man. But yeah. Um, and um, I've forgotten who that... There's another guy as well, too, yeah? And I think Eminem endorsed him. Uh, Jonah Lucas. He did a... He did a... Uh, he wrote um, a track. I can't remember the name of the track, yeah? But it was about this... It was about this guy... Uh, a young guy that um, his friend took him to a certain place, yeah, and he got shot up with a shotgun. Uh, I don't know if you know the track. Yeah, or if I'm you're not, aware I'm, of the yeah, track. I'm like that. Familiar, I've forgotten the name of the track. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think the most I know from him is the Will Smith one. Yeah, but um, I know, yeah, I'm not that familiar with his catalog. But you know, I, I appreciate definitely a good storyteller. You know, um, mm. you know. Slip rip being one, you know, even like Ice Cube, you know, so many mm. with, with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I forgot um, about how can I forget about the legendary Ice Cube man? Yeah, I mean, you, well, when you, you know, when you, <laughs> when you were just talking about that one with Joyner or whatever, you know, and it's the same thing, it's just like you know, those kind mm. of songs of artists that painted those types of pictures would always yeah. definitely yeah. Yeah. and appreciate yeah. their work. But you know, focusing in on your current project that you've got out, I know you said you know, you probably developing some new stuff as well but what was mm. the creative process like in terms of putting that together and um you know tell us a bit more about it uh so you're talking about the breathe album which came out in 2019 um so breathe yeah um it made me go a completely different direction to what I normally go in. So, I mean, if you listen to my stuff that I was putting out before that, and then listen to Breathe. Breathe is a very personal album. Um, Breathe, yeah, is more about dealing with my my own personality um, and things that I've gone through uh, and mental health situations and how I overcome some of those those things, you know what I mean, in my life. You know, I had some barriers in my life. And that's what Breathe is. So, so the whole album is actually called Breathe, that art of reflection, because I was reflecting on my characteristics. I was reflecting on a lot of the stuff, yeah, that I'd been through in the last sort of like 20 to 30 odd years. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, do you know what, yeah? Um, there's some things that I need to I need to get off my chest, you know what I mean? Because therapy ain't helping, yeah. Music was my best therapy; it was right there in front of me the whole time. So I ended up writing, um, you know, I ended up writing "Breathe," yeah, which was was literally yeah. So so the actual "Breathe" track itself, yeah, is on the album, and it was just literally about taking time. Do you know what I mean? Not letting everything overwhelm you. Sometimes, yeah, you get, you know, you, you get a lot of information, and sometimes that information overwhelms you. It's like that in life, you know, from you step outside your door, do you know what I mean? To, you know, wh whenever you, you know, you're going shopping or you're going work or whatever it is that you may be going, sometimes you're overwhelmed by a lot of information. Um, and if you're not well, it can overwhelm you. You know what I mean? So. So it was like, it was like I'd reached a point in my life here where I was like, you know what? I need to stop. You know what I mean? I just need to just stop still. I just need to take a breather. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of stopped and everything just, when I did that, I slowed down. I was able to slow things down. I was like, what am I rushing for, man? Do you know what I mean? Like what? And that's what Breathe was about. And every other track here that followed, um, like I wrote, um, what did I write now? There's, there's so many tracks on that album. It's it's absolutely crazy. But uh, let let me let me go through my list. But um, like I says, it inspired me to do so much. Um, did the breathe album? Because um, I mean, even just and, you know, the the context of mental health, and obviously, I know you got to pick back up. But um, I think that's very important. Just yeah. Speaking on, you know, an issue like mental health where there's a lot of stigma, especially within men and especially within like black men as well within the community. So, um, and it's something that, you know, you was able to touch on from a different vantage point now. Do you, is that something that you 
you'd be looking to do more of it while like maybe working with some groups or anything like that perhaps um because you know there's some organizations and stuff out there as well at this time you know there's quite a few different things you might be able to um develop there's, there's, there's there's different organizations i mean i i'm not involved in any organizations i used to be on facebook but you know how the internet can be you know what i mean um and I decided it wasn't the best place for it because sometimes you can give people advice and they end up doing something and then somebody gets blamed for something. So it's it's one of those things where you have to be careful when it comes to the internet. You know what I mean? Sure. Um so 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 if anything, I kind of help you. I try to help through music, through productivity, because sometimes if you actually talk about the mental health. You can talk about how you got through it, but they might not have the same support. You see what I'm saying? So if they don't have the same support, yeah, whatever you went through and how you went through it, yeah, they might not be able to go through it that way. So what I try to do is I try to say, listen, you know what, yeah? The best way to the best way to deal with any kind of sort of like mental health problems is keep yourself busy. Do what you love to do most, not what you like to do, what you love to do. Do you know what I mean? What you Because having a love for something, yeah, means you're going to be busier. Do you know what I mean? You, you know, you, you, you're going to be more like, you know, if you're drawing, where, if, you know, if you're an artist and you like to draw, do you know what I mean? You, you, you're going to have a love for that. Do you know what I mean? You're going to find all sorts of ways, yeah, to create things. And it's the same thing with music, you know what I mean? Um, so on the mental health side of things, um, I don't mind talking to people and uh, and saying, listen, it's okay, man. You know, whatever you're going through, yeah, it's fine. You know what I mean? You know, you you you've got to be able to express it, but express it in a way, yeah, right, where obviously there's you know there's no violence or anything like that, or you know, if there is, or, you know, if there's any kind of anger issues that you've got to deal with, do you know what I mean? Then maybe you want to seek professional help. You know what I mean? Better professional help if you've got any sort of mental health issue that require medication then that's something that you need to, to to go and deal with but if you've just got like anxiety or some sort of depression it's better to be around people yeah who are productive you have to watch your friends man seriously you know what i mean friends that are going to back you up you have to have a great support unit 100 percent. if you do not have that support unit but also willpower you have to have the determination, yeah, right? The strength and will to want to live, do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and upgrade your character, do you know what I mean? You know, work on your character on a daily basis, do you know what I mean? Work on, on things. And I think music is a great medium for that as well, too. Do you know, it helps. But you need to be around the right people to be able to do that. that that's what my music represents. That's what that, that album represents. Uh, you know I, know I mean, you, it tells I know you. you must have had people even give you that kind of feedback and say that, you know, some of those songs have helped them get through or, you know, attest to having similar circumstances. You know, you will get that kind of feedback as well. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You know, I've had. I've had I've had so much I've had so much feedback on on some of those tracks. It, it was actually surprising. Um, I actually didn't think I thought that the album was too personal. Um, I still think that, but in saying that, you know, I've, I've had messages saying, "Yo, listen, do you know what? I, I love the way that you spoke about your grandmother. Do you know what I mean? Um, in this particular track." Um, yeah. I love the way that you talked about your wife, you know what I mean, in, in this particular track, you know what I mean, and so forth. And and I get, oh, I didn't know you went through that, but you look, you know what I mean, you you look healthy and strong. I didn't know you was going through that. Do you know what I mean? So so it puts people in a, in a certain, um, you know, it, it puts people, it, it makes people think, you know what I mean? Yeah. So whenever they're going through certain things in their life, yeah, and they're listening to that, yeah, and they're thinking, oh, it's, I'm not the only one that's going through that. You know what I mean? And and and, and that's why I decided to to put it out because I was like umming and ahhing about it. And it was actually my wife, yeah, right, that, that actually helped me with it as well because while I was writing all of the tracks on that album, while I was writing all of those tracks on that album, um, I'd speak to my wife because she knows my personality. And if there was anything in there that wasn't true to my character, 
it's getting written out. I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to be a part of that because I didn't want I didn't want to put a fake persona through it. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. that was the sort of like inspiration behind the whole album. I, I mean, I've got tracks like First Born, you know, that talks about um it talks about my birth, it talks about what my mother went through when she had me, and then my siblings coming along. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, First Born is a great, great, you know, a great track. I wrote um from the cradle to the grave, you know, with my father, he had, um, he had, um, uh, what's it called? Prostate cancer. Do you know what I mean? So he died from prostate cancer, you, you know, and our family felt it. So it tells the story of, you know, how my dad used to play with us when we were younger and stuff that we missed with him. Do you know what I mean? Like he used to do Taekwondo with us, he used to chase us around the house and, do all sorts of stuff, do you know what I mean? So, you know, having that sort of element. And they're the stories that people, I think that they're the stories that people like to hear, you know what I mean? Sort of in the private, you know, in you know, in private really, instead of the club bangers you get. Well, I so, mean, it's, it's like we're yeah. all human and, and, you know, oftentimes, you know, um, you know, we could share similarities and things, albeit us having differences. The one thing we can definitely find similarities in is in things that affect us, you know, things that, affect mm. us also affect others in different ways it may not be the same circumstance or situation but it's an testament to then them being able to see the human being in the artist as mm. well as opposed to you know somebody who's just selling them as you said like club bangers or a certain type of persona mm. people like when they can connect with the individual and feel as though you know what this is a real person you know just like myself and uh they go through something and I've gone through something. They can, you know, they can have um, empathy in some cases. Some 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 people may dislike it, but also, you know, they've got that choice. But um, it's like a humanistic emotion or thing. I, I think, you know, that's kind of my... Um, I mean, for me, it's, it's, for me, it's all about, um, you know, authenticity. You yeah. know, authenticity, uh, uh, um, you know, being, being authentic. It, it gives you, do you know something? Being authentic, of authentic, yeah, about who you are, gives you, yeah, um, a power that I, you know, it, it gives you, it gives you, it gives you a, a level of courage, yeah, right, that you wouldn't get anywhere else because you know you're being real, you know you're realistic, and you're. I tell you what, it gives you peace of mind. You're at peace with yourself when you're real with yourself. It's not like they say I should you use can, that in a line, can, isn't it? You can stand in your truth, you, but yeah, that's, that's right. A nice little line, but um, you're at peace with yourself if you're real with yourself. Is that what you said? Yeah, exactly. There you go. One hundred percent. So, um, awesome. you know, I, I think it's dope, man. And um, you know, as I say, I always say the same thing, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that's why I definitely appreciate like artists that run the fringe or on the underground sometimes because they're a bit more creatively driven and inspired than mm. the stuff that we hear coming from outside of the, the mainstream. And, um, but you know, music wise, let's go forward a bit. What do you have planned for the near future? So I, I I'm working on, I'm working on, I'm working on a new album. It's sort of on and off. Do you know what I mean? So in, in between my work, you know, looking after my family and I'm, I'm, I'm working on this new album. Um, I've been working on it for the last, since, actually since I dropped the Breathe album. Uh, and I really want people to, I really want people to hear the, the new title, but I don't want to give it away just yet. Do you know what I mean? Because when I say, yeah, after I dropped that, after I dropped the Breathe album, you can see me grinning like a Cheshire cat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. So it was like, it was like, um, after I dropped the Breathe album and then I started working on it, something changed. You know what I mean? Um, I think something in me changed. Like I was saying, because I felt like I was at peace with myself, I was able to see something completely different. So I'm in the process. Of, it's half written already. And I've got some some dope artists on, artists that I never thought that would, you know, be part of this this new album. Nice. Um, you know, on it, do you know what I mean? So I've got some some massive collaborations, yeah. And it would be nice for me to get the album out. And it's completely different to the last album that I did. Do 
you know what I mean? So this one, yeah, it's just, it's more fun. Um, still on the sort of storytelling side, you know what I mean? But it feels more free, feel more free, you know, from the, you know, from all the mental health stuff and, and that. That was like, it was like a chapter got, in my life. Got that off your chest, you know. Uh... Yeah, got that off the chest. Now it's time to move on and just enjoy life now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what this new album is about. Do you know what I mean? So I can't, I can't wait. I've got some, I've got some bangers on there, man. Trust okay. me. Well, I, I know there, you say you can't give too there, much and, away, um, but um, I'm guessing it's going to be a full album, though. Could you know about 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 how many tracks? Um, you can probably let us know. I know it's all, I know it's all subject to change, but you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it could be anywhere between 12 to 15. It might even be a double album, you know, you know what I mean? It's possible, do you know what I mean? Because, like, my brain is on fire at the moment. It's not it's not stopping, do you know what I mean? So I'm still jotting things down, working out new ideas and, and so forth. But, yeah, I, I can't wait. But I tell you what, though, when I'm, when I'm close to sort of, like, you know, putting this album together, I'm going to call you up and I'm going to tell you what the title of the album is called. Okay, yeah. no doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you, you'll be the first to know, yeah? Uh, we appreciate that. And, you know, shouts out to Mixer Reviews as well. Also on Back That Online, we'll definitely have Mixer uh, do a review for it because we appreciate checking out the new music and stuff also. And he'll definitely let us know his thoughts. Mm. But, you know, we'll, we already, I guess, spoke about what inspires you when you make new music, you know, and even you just express there, just, you know, your life and going through it and um, then taking your time to then scribe and create. But I suppose within making music, now some artists are different. Some artists, when they're making music and going through that process, they're not listening to anything else. Others, they're still listening to different types of music. So I'm going to ask, what music are you currently bumping at the minute? So um, I'm actually so I'm actually listening to I've gone back to listening to um, distant relatives, but I'm also listening to Mikey Spice with my mum. Do you know what I mean? Because my mum's getting on; she just turned seventy, uh, and she's got some health issues and that. So I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm currently listening to sort of like you know I'm going back to listening to sort of like Mikey Spice. I'm not listening to anything new unless somebody shares something something with me. Um, it's still some some of the older music that I'm listening to. Every now and again, I'll go back and listen to the the you know the '90s music. So nothing nothing currently nothing currently hits me. Um, I, I I really can't can't say. Do you know what I mean? Um, if it's if one of my favorite artists puts something out, then I'll listen to it. Um, but there's nothing really hitting me at the moment. Do you know what I mean? I I still find myself going back to the you know, to the 90s, early 2000 music, you know what I mean? So there's nothing nothing really hitting me at this particular moment. And besides that, when I'm writing an album, I I tend, I deliberately don't listen to anything else because I don't want that influence. I'm one of those people, I'm very easily influenced by things and I don't want to be writing an album and somebody said something and I say, end up saying the same thing. I mean, it's already plausible already that I might say the same thing, but in a different way, but... You know what I mean? I try not to listen to other people's music, you know what I mean, while I'm in the process of writing an album. You know what I mean? Because that, that just brings out more and more of the authentic, you know, personality that I have. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. That makes sense. And I hear you, that's what I'm saying, you know, because I know some artists definitely feel like that, where it's like they want to be just locked into what they're working on in that time and mm. not necessarily hearing too much of that influence and Maybe if it is something they're listening to, like you said, it might be like older music and, you know, something that they're in that kind of vibration and groove with as opposed to, you know, what's kind of happening with the present sort of music that's coming out. Well, um, you know, let the people know where we can find you on the web, like social media. I mean, Spotify, what, pl what platforms are you up on? Um, um, people out there. So so, so the, the, there's there's been a few updates on. I do have a Facebook page called Sons of Liberty. Um, so I'm currently on that. Um, that's where the majority of the updates are. Um, and I've just got the one. I've just got the one album on. Um, I've got on the platform already. Man, I did not prepare. Uh, Bank. Yeah, um, Bandcamp, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, man, you're on point, man. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, 
uh, keeping me on point, man. Um, so, so Bandcamp, um, I've I've got an album out on there. I did some bits and pieces on SoundCloud, but I'm not really messing with SoundCloud. I think if I'm going to put my album out again, it'll probably be on Bandcamp. I'm not sure how I'm going to distribute this this new album, but it's surprising to me. A lot of people were asking me um, for a physical copy. So they want a physical copy on CD, do you know what I mean? So that's definitely something that I will definitely consider. Um, and, and I also do my own artwork as well too. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's never, no. it's not something that I do anywhere, you know, like I don't get, I don't hire somebody to do it for me. I do my own artwork. You know what I mean, so yeah, yeah. Bandcamp, Bandcamp is Bandcamp is the is the place where I'm putting the majority of my music and Sons of, uh, Sons of Liberty. I also have I also have um, uh, Kemet Music or Kemet Music UK on uh, uh, YouTube as well. So it's only got like, like a few songs from the Bandcamp tracks as well too. So let me let me just let me just grab the name of that. Yeah, let us know any of this, and if you got any social media handles as well. Um, I know it's so much nowadays with the Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. There's only so much. Mm. I guess yeah, I don't, I don't do, do with, I don't do with all of them things. It's just <laughs> I just keep it simple, man. Facebook, YouTube, Bandcamp, done. Yeah. That's it. Okay. You know what I mean, um, but yeah, uh, Kemet Music. Let's see, Kemet. Yeah, Kemet UK Music. Where are we at? Yeah. So on, on YouTube, yeah, it's just called Kemet UK Music. Yeah. Um, that's where some of my tracks are. And like I said, the Bandcamp as well, too. Um, yeah, just type in on Bandcamp, just type in Kemet 1976. Easy. I mean, you'll find it. Okay, no, definitely. We'll get a link and stuff set up and um, get those put in the description, obviously, on the YouTube side. If you guys are watching on YouTube, then definitely give us a like and a subscribe and a thumbs up and subscribe to Kemet's channel. Also, put a link in the description. If you're listening on Spreaker, definitely appreciate you guys who listen in, checking out about that experience. Your boy finds a new trial representative about that online. We still got a bit more time with Kemet before we wind down. So um, we may actually do something that we don't necessarily always do, but sometimes we may ask the artist if they want to drop us a little um, hot 16, you know, if um, they want to kick a hot 16 for the people. It doesn't have to be a freestyle. It could be a lyric of something that you've already got, but um, we call this acapella flow. So you got any acapella flow for us, Kemet? You know something? I haven't right now. So I'm not going to lie. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to put myself on the spot like that. I was literally working on something the other day and I was just like, I was thinking I wanted to come in and just, just record a little something. Do you know what I mean? Something new. So do you, do I'm going to leave I'm gonna leave that to an, uh, for another time. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. No, that's not. Do you just mention that? Do you do your own studio recording and stuff as well then? Because I know you mentioned yeah. your graphic, So you pretty much behind the whole project from A to B. Yeah, so I do, I literally record myself, you know what I mean? I, I have Cubase here, do you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just sort of like working on that. Um, you know, I, I started off with, um, oh, what's that that program called? It was like a little, like a free program that I used to use. Um, everyone used to use it. I can't even remember the name of it anyway. It's oh, been such a long time that I used to use uh, it. Music 2000? Audacity, no, Audacity is. Oh, Audacity. Audacity. I used to okay. use Audacity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Audacity. Audacity is great to get into if you don't, you know, to yeah, start yeah. out with. It's usable. It's usable. Yeah, yeah, you can still use it. As a matter of fact, yeah, right, a lot of my early stuff were recorded on Audacity. Oh. You know what I mean? Um, but I use, like I said, Cubase is a lot better, do you know what I mean? Especially for mixing and, and so forth. It's more personal, you know? Um, so, yeah, 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 I'd, I'd, uh, yeah. I do it myself. I mean, you, you get to a point where you know when you're relying on people and you're trying to get people to meet up at certain times, you know, and they, and they don't, you know, what I mean, they just don't turn up. You've got to be able to have a backup plan. You know what I mean? So that's you know, for any artist listening out there, do you know what I mean? If you feel like you can't do this solo, you're mistaken, man. You can do this solo, man. Trust me, you can set up. 
I, I remember my first studio, yeah. I set my first studio up. It cost me um around about three hundred pounds to set up my first studio. Might have even been less than that. Do you know what I mean? And then I just sort of upgraded as I as I went along. You know what I mean? So you can set you can set up a studio. It won't cost much to set up a brand new studio. All you need, yeah, seriously, is a mic, um, um, a, an amplifier. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Mic amplifier. Yeah, I mean, especially screen. nowadays, you know, your audio interface. Um, but yeah, the interface. The stuff, yeah, a lot of the stuff you have now is on. It's, it's all digital. Mm. It's not. I mean. There's still, I you guess, can get it digital. Well, you can, you can pick, you can, you can pick up an external. Um, you can pick, you can pick up yeah, an you, external you um, thing cheap. for for yeah, scraps. They're, they're cheap, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But I, I just, I was, I was more prefacing that the, um, like a lot of the technology now, the hardware is all on the computer, so you don't necessarily need that mm -hmm. much hardware. You know, as you said, you can you need, can need hardware. Need, yeah, you don't. You probably yeah, need so it's the one mic the software side, yeah. And, yeah, you know, so it's still yeah. better to go to some studios and have like the big desks and all that stuff, and you know, yeah. kind of the sound but, quality is much more different, man. When yeah, you go to a proper studio, still, but ultimately, you know I mean? there's a lot of um, stuff that can be done software based as well. But also as well too, um, I, I have, um, I have a knowledge, yeah, right, of sound as well too. Do you know what I mean? So Lovely. you know, I, I can, I can hear like reverb in a room or something like that. You know, yeah. you know, friends have sent me that friends, friends have sent me their tracks, yeah, and I'm like, oh, I bet you had your curtains open. I bet you, I bet you had, I bet you had your curtains open, yeah. He says, how do you know you? I have my curtains open? I says, I can hear your voice mm -hmm. bouncing off the window. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so you've you've got to you've got to you've got to learn about you've got to learn about sound as well too. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I have like um, you know, I have like a, a like a, you know a shield over my mic as well too. Do you know what I mean? That, that cuts out a lot of the the reverb, you know, from your vocals. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. so forth. You know well, I mean, I mean so, you know, I know you. You definitely kitted up. We definitely um, salute you for mm -hmm. the work that you're doing. And wish you the best with the upcoming project. Definitely want to hear more about it when you obviously unveil yeah, yeah, some of the yeah. features and the title. Before we wind out, any last things you want to let anybody know to look out for, or anything else you'd like to plug? I mean, before we wind out, close yours, my brother. I don't think so, really and truthfully. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just grateful to be able to have a platform like yourself and and Bean as well too. You know what I mean? Two fantastic guys who are representing the community. Do you know what I mean? Out there, and you know, it's an absolute pleasure, yeah, for you to come to me and and, and talk to me about music. You know what I mean? And you know, I think we've had a great conversation tonight. Do you know what I mean okay. about music, and it's something that I, I just love. So. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a couple there's a couple of people. You know, there's uh, Immaculate. Do you know what I mean? Like he's put me on. Do you know what I mean? Immaculate. You know who he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's he's Part put me on. Yeah. You know, big up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Listen, listen. I've been looked after, man. These guys, they do look after me. I featured with a lot of these guys as well, too. Do you know what I mean? Um, and they've they've looked after me great, so I can't. Do you know what I mean? Yourself as well too, Bean. Do you know what I mean? A again, do you know what I mean? So that that's the only thing that I would, I'd like to say. Do you know what I mean? That's it. No doubt. I mean, I wait wait for the wait for the new album in the next year or so. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, man. We'll wait for that, well, yeah. We'll be looking forward to it, and you know, keep on pushing, keep on building, keep the positivity mm. up, and. Um, for all the guys listening, definitely appreciate everybody who listens in to the very end or watches. You know, thanks for your time. And we look forward to connecting more in the future. On the know that you know that you're killing it. On the know that you know that you're killing it. On the know that you know that you're killing it. On the know that you know that you're killing it.